So this is part two of my read through of documents from the FBI relating to Kylie's case. Now, as I mentioned in the first read through, there's a lot of pages that are pretty much fully redacted. There's a lot of paragraphs that are fully redacted. So they're just empty boxes. There's no clues as to what even was said in those boxes. So for those bits, I'm just going to scroll straight through past them. Um, but I'll still put them there so you can see them. Um, but I'll just quickly scroll through them. You can always freeze frame if you want just to have a look at them. Um, but ones like that are pretty much essentially they're blank pages. There's nothing there that we can glean from them. So where we're at currently with looking at these documents is things relating to tips that have been passed on to the FBI. So some of them we've heard before, some of them are variations on what we've heard before, some of them are completely brand new things that we've not heard. So let's jump in and continue reading through these documents. Okay, I need to mention here too, for if you've not seen the first half of this, the reason that it is a bit fuzzy is that um, I couldn't download the document straight up. So what I ended up doing was screenshotting every single page. So sitting there and screenshotting 105 pages of documents. So that's why it's a little bit fuzzy. Okay, so here we have form type FD71A Guardian Complaint Form. Date 17th of August. Possible sighting of Kylie Mae Rodney in Harper, Texas. SC. Okay. Sorry, I'm not American, so... I just presumed that TX is Texas. What is SC stand for? Okay, um, I should also mention that this is a straight read through, so I'm not going to be sharing opinions or anything with this. Okay, so we have the case ID, and then over on the side next to it, we have unsub Kylie, Kylie May Rodney. Victim, minor, Truckee, California, child abduction, no ransom. And in the earlier parts of the document, it clarified that they qualified it as a child abduction because of the importance of getting onto things quickly when a child goes missing. By classifying it as a child abduction, it means that they can act quickly get all the resources they need really, really quickly. Now, obviously, a lot of tips like this one are red herrings, especially when they're somewhere way away from where we know Kylie was finally found because she's not going to end up going to another state and then being returned and put in the reservoir. It just doesn't work like that. Okay. So you've got all the usual stuff, um, name, date of birth, home telephone number, email account, yada yada, um, and the IP address, which resolves to Pleasant Forest, Arkansas. Submitted an online tip to the FBI National Threat Operations Center via tips.fbi.gov regarding possible sighting of Kylie Mae Rodney in Harper, Texas. Okay, violation fugitives, emergency false, threat to life false, submitted text. She did not seem to be in distress since she was smiling and talking to the male companion who was a young but slightly older Hispanic looking male. He had a lighter complexion than normal Hispanics. With dark hair, about 5 foot 9, I printed out the poster that you had of her and took it to the family dollar and the manager and another employee agreed that it looked like the same young lady. 
they have seen. They think they've seen her more than once in the store. I left them with the poster to check with other employees. I did not remember what vehicles were in the parking lot. And then the standard follow-up questions. What fugitive are you reporting? Kylie May Rodney. What agency? Missing persons. When and where? August 8th or 9th, I was at the Family Dollar Store in Harper, Texas and saw a young lady with a family, with a young man. I had seen her picture once on the news, but didn't think much of it since we are a small community. But they looked out of place for the local residents. The more pictures I've seen of her and the fact that this young lady was also around five foot seven, the more it has bothered me. Okay, what are the physical characteristics? She had on an oversized white long-sleeved pullover sweater that reached down mid-thigh. Her hair was pulled up into two buns on top of her head. What is the make model of vehicle? Didn't observe them getting out of or into any vehicle since they were already in store when I got there and I left before they did. Complaint information is all blank. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, each of these reports is duplica duplicated onto a different type of document. So this is basically saying everything that I've just read out already. Okay, so this one is another possible sighting. Documents, document synopsis created 17th of August, 5.20 p.m. Um, on 16th of August at 9.46 p.m. Eastern Time, such and such, date of birth, such and such, cell phone number, such and such, an officer with the National Park Service of Redwoods National Park called to report that they wanted to provide the FBI with information pertaining to a possible sighting of missing person Kylie Mae Rodney in Crescent City, California. Redacted provided the following. They said that he, he said he was an officer with the National Park Service and was calling the FBI regarding a missing person, Kylie Mae Rodney, in Crescent City, California. A man named Redacted alerted the officers to a possible sighting of Rodney, who was with a young male in his mid-twenties. The male was average build and height, Caucasian, short, brown, wavy hair with scruffy facial hair. The young lady that resembled Rodney was wearing a light-coloured tank and shorts and had on a black necklace. Redacted said that Redacted had a short conversation with them and they, were say, they said they were on a trip from Louise, Louisiana and the young male was her father. They didn't have local knowledge of geography and the accent with which the young woman spoke was suspicious according to the third party. They were on the beach and the physical contact between the two didn't match the relationship of a father and daughter. Also mentioned that the two said that they had a rental car with them, but didn't give a make or model of the vehicle. The sighting occurred approximately 5.30 to 5.45 Pacific time today, 16th of August. The story just didn't add up, so they felt the need to report it, along with the fitting the physical description. Redacted said that he can be reached at whatever, if anyone has any questions. Redacted left two numbers if, if anyone has any further questions. So then you have the repeated stuff and then of course a few more pages that's just all redactions. Okay now here we have information related to missing person Kylie Rodney. Case ID blah blah blah. Synopsis. Document synopsis created on 17th of August. Um, see Guardian redacted for current assessment data. 
on 16th of August, 11.15pm Eastern Time, redacted, date of birth, redacted cell number, redacted, called the FBI NTIC to report information related to missing person Kylie Rodney, case number, yada yada. Note this information is being provided for domain awareness, dissemination to local authorities, or for whatever action deemed appropriate. Redacted provided the following information. Redacted was reporting how she called a few days ago. This was regarding the Kylie Rodney case. Then, Redacted's cell cellular telephone number, Redacted, Redacted who was, Redacted, came on the phone. Redacted stated, Redacted was interested in this case. Apparently there was a woman, Redacted, in the comments of the Find Kylie Rodney's page, commenting and alluding to how Redacted may have information regarding Kylie's disappearance. Redacted contacted, Redacted, and pieced together, pieced information together. According to Redacted, there was a couple people in a red car that showed up to Redacted's residence. Redacted stated, Redacted asked to rent Redacted's basement till Christmas. We know this story. Redacted did not know if Redacted were related. However, Redacted stated there was a girl Redacted thought was Kylie in the back of the red car. Redacted stated Redacted did not know the make or model of the car. Redacted did not know the license plate number. Redacted was calling now because no one had called Redacted. Redacted stated this incident happened on 8th of August. She does not have residence. Redacted does not have this person's phone number. Redacted stated that she contacted Placer County Sheriff's Office regarding this information. She was also stating Kylie's car was in Redacted, blah, blah, blah. We're hiding Kylie's car in Redacted. Does not know how Redacted knew this. Redacted does not have this person's address. Lastly, Redacted contacted Placer County Sheriff's Office. So, this is a continuation of the Shalisa Singh thing. And here it says that someone said that they were hiding Kylie's car in somewhere. So, I don't think we've heard that part of it. So there's the repetition, that fits better on the page of this particular document. So I'll just leave this up for a second so anyone who wants to screenshot it can do so because it's a real pain in the ass when you want to screenshot something and someone gives you like one second to do so. So this is what I just read through in a more condensed version. Now this is an interesting one. I'm not sure why it is being connected with Kylie's case. So 17th of August, individual e-tip, so online tip, individual reports felon in possession of a firearm making threats to harm. Okay, I'll skip through all the housekeeping stuff. So anonymous tipster, tipster from an IP address in Las Vegas, Nevada, submitted an online tip to the FBI NTOC via tips.fbi.gov to report his redacted telephone number, redacted address, redacted, is a felon in possession of a firearm making 
threats to harm in Kings Beach, California. Note on 17th of August, 12.22 a.m., Redacted spoke, spoke with Office Redacted, badge number redacted, regarding the following information. Anonymous reported the following information. Okay, what was the exact crime that occurred? Drug trafficking and illegal firearms. When did it occur? 21st of August. 2021 to current so a bit over a year where and that's redacted so then we have the dupl duplicate report and just pages and pages of just blank redacted stuff absolutely nothing to see here folks all redacted so I don't know what's going on there and then we have another interesting one where somebody by the date of birth, telephone numbers, yada yada, was interviewed at her residence by FBI Special Agent and Placer County Sheriff's Office Detective mm, after being advised of the identity of the interviewing agent and the nature of the interview, such and such provided the following information. All of which is redacted. Okay, up the top here it says collected item log. So event title non custodial over interviews in Truckee, California, 12th of August. Case ID, details, what it just said. So basically, this is another recorded interview. Holding office Sacramento. So description non-custodial overt interview of redacted on 12th of August collected 8 p.m. EDT evidence type interview non-custodial media type CD DVD Blu-ray original type original physical media and then you have the same thing from 740 I think that seems to be the only difference that I can see here um, media type CD DVD blu-ray and then here you have another interview from the 12th of August at 11:55 a.m. Um, evidence type interview media type CD DVD blu-ray the times of those three suggest to me that they are three separate individuals that have been interviewed because otherwise it would have been impossible to interview someone in like 20 minute interviews and well not logical either. Okay so this page is another log the same as the previous one so this is a log for interviews conducted on the 16th of August. So you have one interview that was conducted um, oh now it actually doesn't say the time there um, start surveillance 16th end surveillance 16th um, it says collected on 17th at 11.40 and then the following one says collected on 17th at 12.25 so it says that there were interviews done on the 16th but it doesn't say the times so it doesn't necessarily mean that it was different people ah now this is where it gets more interesting okay so physical media media type CD, DVD, Blu-ray, the date is the 16th of August, polygraph post-test interviews of redacted and redacted by SA redacted on 16th of August. 
So right there, you have evidence that there were actually polygraph interviews done. Seems like, like they were really putting the pedal to the metal at this point, because now you have interviews done on the 17th, so the following day. Okay, so here it says collected on 17th of August for both of these. So collected the same day they were done. Um, the first one says 7.05, the second one says 7 p.m. And once again, the media type is CD, DVD, Blu-ray. So there is a lot of recorded interviews that were done in Sacramento. So anyone doing FOIA requests, it's worth having a look at these and seeing if you can FOIA these interviews. This is another record of interview, but this interview was done by telephone, also on the 17th of August. Now you've got all the usual housekeeping stuff at the top there, but under the description it says attempted non-custodial overt telephonic interviews of redacted so to me that and it was recorded media type cd dvd blu-ray evidence type interview non-custodial so to me that sounds like there was some sort of conversation but it didn't necessarily end up as a interview as planned i may be wrong because the second one doesn't say attempted, it says interview of redacted on 18th of the 7th, of 17th of August over the telephone. So that one clearly was a actual interview. And that one was recorded, CD, DVD, Blu-ray. And then you have a third one, non-custodial overt telephonic interview of redacted on 17th, um, evidence type, interview, media type, CD, DVD, Blu-ray. So then you have more records of interview. Seems to be that the important dates here are the 12th and the 17th that interviews were carried out. These are ones that were carried out in person, um, but it seems like they all have CD records of them and here is another information sheet with even more redacted pages or redacted information so you can see there's just oodles and oodles and oodles of redacted information here and then it seems like we're back to tips again so date 18th of August um, import form, guardian complaint form, which basically means tip. Got all the housekeeping there, so then we'll scroll down and see what it says. So this one comes from an IP address in Burbank, California, and was submitted as an online tip to the FBI NTOC. Um, regarding possible location of missing person Kylie Rodney in LA, California. Note according to FBI missing person poster for Kylie Rodney, this information is being forwarded to review by the Sacramento Field Office. Okay, and then you've got a whole heap of housekeeping. Submitted text. Um, www.yahoo.com authorities announce phase search missing HTMO. Now this is an interesting one. There is a possibility that, possibility that I might have seen Kylie Rodney SUV in the South Bay area. The sticker looks familiar. Only problem, can't remember exactly when, when or where. The following are my routes to work since I remember going south. And then you've got El Segundo to Main Street to Torres Avenue 
El Segundo to Redondo Beach to Crenshaw to Prairie or Hawthorne. Not a very useful tip really. And continuing on, 105 to 110 south to Redondo Beach or 91 west or 190 or Torrance. That sticker looks really familiar or really looks familiar. Violation questions. What was the exact crime? Missing person. When did the crime occur or what was the date? Sometime last week. Where? South Bay area. And then of course you have the redacted stuff and then the repeated stuff on a different form. So same as usual. Okay, so this one is titled Electronic Communication. You've got a whole bunch of redacted stuff first, and then the usual case ID stuff, and then Foreign Dissemination Legal Statement. Pursuant to Attorney General Guidelines for Domestic FBI Operations, the dissemination of the enclosed information is in the interest of the national security of the US the information is relevant to the recip recipient's authorised responsibilities. Its dissemination is consistent with the national security interest of the US and the FBI has considered the effect such dissemina dissemination may reasonably be expected to have on any identifiable US person. If required by policy, either the Office or the Chief Division Council or the Office of the General Counsel has reviewed the information contained in the enclosed communication. Passage of this information is consistent with the standards for dissemination of US person information to foreign authorities as authorised in AGG DOM. The FBI will undertake reasonable step to, steps to ensure that any intelligent information that the FBI disseminates pursuant to this authorization is not and will not be used for either assassination prohibited under executive order or torture as defined in US criminal law. To this end, the FBI shall take the following actions. The FBI shall notify the recipient entity that unless otherwise provided herein or expressly provide authorised by FBINQ in a separate communications, the information in this document is for intelligence and lead purposes only, and the recipient's government may not use the information in any legal proceedings, disseminate the information to any other gov government, person or entity, or take any overt investigative steps including but not limited to formal legal process or direct contact with reference persons, entities or their associates based on the information in this document. Legat shall coordinate as required by any applicable agreements or memoranda of understanding prior to the dissemination of the information in the tier, tier line, tier line and the GAT shall report to the FBINQ Operational Division and International Operations Division any indication that the recipient entity to which this information has been provided did not honour the caveat regarding use or dissemination of this information or use the information for either assassination or torture. Well, that was super information. Okay, so no idea what all that means. It sounds like it's just legal speak protecting their ass. So we, here we have title, tear line or tear line. I don't know what that means, so I don't know which is the correct pronunciation. So let's go on and look at the details. On 7th of August 2022, the FBI National Threat Operations Centre received a report from Redacted, redacted Kylie Rodney went to a party in Truckee, California on 5th of August 2022 and did not return home. According to Rodney Neiman, Kylie Rodney redacted 
attended the party located near the Prosser family campgrounds off Highway 89 in Truckee, California with friends and classmates. So this was all at the beginning, but I'll just keep reading. On 8th of August 2022, FBI Sacramento opened a full investigation into the disappearance of Kylie Rodney redacted. This investigation was opened in support of ongoing investigative efforts by the Nevada and Placer County Sheriff's Departments. Investigation thus far has revealed approximately 150 to 300 individuals attended various parties at or near Prosser family campgrounds and Prosser Lake on the evening of August 5th, 2022. Okay, down the bottom here. Because this investigation involves a juvenile missing under suspicious circumstances, FBI Sacramento considers this an exigent request as in urgent for anyone who's not sure of the meaning there. And then once again, we have redacted and repetition. Rinse and repeat. And then in the middle of all the redacted stuff on this page, unless otherwise provided herein or expressly authorized by Federal Bureau of Investigation Headquarters in a separate communication, the information in this document is for intelligence and lead purposes only, and your government may not use the information in any legal proceedings, disseminate the information to any other government, person or entity, or take any overt investigative steps, including but not limited to formal legal process or direct contact with reference persons, entities or their associates, based on the information in this document. And then we rinse and repeat. Okay, we're over half an hour, but I'm going to push on because I think I can do this in under the 10 minute time frame and maybe at least keep it under 40 minutes because this is where it starts getting a little bit interesting. Okay, so we have another form, which is another, um, another tip. Title Potential Sighting of Missing Person Kylie Mae Rodney at Dollar General in Nice, California. I'm guessing that, I was guessing it as Nice, like Nice in France, but then I could be wrong, maybe you pronounce it nice. So if anyone knows, just let me know underneath. I apologise if I have got it wrong. Then you've got the redacted stuff. Then the usual housekeeping stuff, case ID, and let's have a look at the synopsis. So this is a call from the 18th of August, and it's got partial telephone number, which I find interesting. So this person called the FBI NTOC to report a potential sighting at a dollar store in Nice, California. And they provided the following information. On either 6th of August or 7th of August, this person witnessed an unknown subject she described as tall, very good looking male with dark hair inside a dollar store, potentially a Dollar General in Nice, California. The unsub then went to his car, which this person described as a silver or white SUV of an unknown make and model and handed his groceries to an individual who resembled Rodney. The individual resembling Rodney had dirty blonde hair, a Lake Tahoe shirt and was slumped down in the car and her hair was all messed up. This person advised the writer the woman just didn't look good when this poor person saw her. According to a store manager, this person spoke with the dollar store, saves its CCTV recordings for six months. I wish they would use proper punctuation in these things. It would make it so much easier to read. At a later point, potentially on the 14th, 
this person witnessed the unsub in the same vehicle driving on the highway when there's no traffic on the highway in the morning without the woman in his vehicle. This person attempted to report the unsub and the woman to LLE but advised the writer nobody returned her calls. Hmm, this is sounding familiar. Redacted was unable to identify the law enforcement agency in charge of investigating Rodney's disappearance. And then, you guessed it, rinse and repeat. So, there's your repeat and then you have a bunch of redacted stuff yet again. Okay, so here we have a tip from the 19th of August. Missing individual potentially seen in Las Vegas. Case ID, yada yada, Kylie Mae Rodney. So this is someone, they've got the cell phone number for this person, called the FBI NTOC to report information regarding a missing individual potentially seen in Las Vegas, Nevada. They provided the following information. They stated that she was in the Las Vegas, in Las Vegas last week, during which she saw a female teenager who looked like Kylie Rodney, who is missing person in California, on Fremont Street, Street. Redacted stated that the sighting took place on 15th of August, 2022, and has not reported the sighting to law enforcement. Redacted stated that the individual was a teenage girl who appeared to be from 15 to 17 years old and walking with an older man. Redacted stated that she was crying while holding the older man's hand as they walked by. Redacted stated the teenager was blonde and around 5'6 in height. However, no more descriptions were known. And there it is. We've made it to the end of this document. I will do a follow-up video on this where I just go through the highlights of this document. Um, thank you so much for listening. If you've made it this, this far, well done. I greatly appreciate you hanging in there with me. And, of course, if you feel like buying me a coffee after this, um, the link is in my description. This has certainly been a hard slog reading through this document. Um, thank you so much for listening. Please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And leave a comment below so we can get this out into the algorithm.